Hello, Jeff Zwerink. Welcome to Science Faith Connection, the segment of our show where we look at important scientific ideas and see how they relate to the truth of Christianity. Today, I'm joined by Dr. Hugh Ross. And we're going to be investigating the consequences of an ice age. Hugh, it's good to have you here today. Well, thank you for inviting me, Jeff. So we know that Earth is has experienced a number of ice ages in the past, and there's a potential for having a new one. If we go into a new ice age, will that destroy humanity? It won't destroy humanity, but it'll certainly disrupt global high technology civilization. I mean, if you double the amount of ice covering the planet, that means fewer places for people to live. And also when you do go into an ice age, the climate becomes extremely unstable. So yeah, it's gonna be challenging. So kind of uh, flesh that out a little bit for us. I can see why having ice cover more of the earth would narrow down some of the places we could live, particularly I know in the United States, you're going to get and cover up the Midwest, which is particularly relevant for growing crops. But why does it make it harder for the climate to be stable? What goes on there? Well, this is something we see in the ice age cycle that uh, you get these periods of uh, ice advancing and retreating. And it affects how much sunlight is reflected away because ice reflects sunlight with about 60% efficiency. And uh, you also get greater seasonal differences. And you're talking about you know, parts of the North Midwest. But the truth is, uh, during an ice age, San Diego's harbor becomes frozen over for six months of the year. Even some of the Mexican harbors get uh, frozen over. So uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's not pleasant. And uh, we've seen that, I mean, we've had an ice age cycle for the past 2.58 million years. The only time in that cycle where we've had climate stability has been the last 9,500 years. Uh, you know, amazing things happened in our interglacial that made possible uh, climate stability. Previous interglacials were characterized by extreme climate instability, as were the glacials. What we're seeing right now is the exception. So I want to come back to that because I think that's pretty important. Uh, just kind of give us a little bit of background. How often do these ice ages happen? I mean, we're talking a few thousand years. We're talking global warming. We're worried about that over the span of a century, maybe a millennia. What's the time frame for these ice age cycles? And can we prevent one? Can we prevent the next one from happening? Well, from 2.58 million years ago to 800,000 years ago, the periodicity was 41,000 years. For the last 800,000 years, it's been approximately 100,000 years, as characterized by 90,000 years of an ice age and roughly 10,000 years of an interglacial. So what is it that causes that? I'm, I'm gathering that's not just how much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, how much greenhouse gases. It seems like there's something got to be something beyond the Earth that's causing those things. Yes, it is. I mean, uh, rarely has Earth had an ice age cycle. That only happens when you've got a very delicate balance between the planet having no ice at all and the planet being completely frozen over. And for the last 2.58 million years, we've been in that delicate balance. But it's happening at a time when the sun's been brighter than it's ever been before, literally 23% brighter than it was at the origin of life. And so to describe in weathering climate change, is how three successive asteroidal collisions, major asteroids colliding with the Earth, cooled down the Earth and brought the Earth from a hot, warm condition into this delicate balance where an ice age cycle uh, could be initiated. Oddly enough, if I get what you're saying, by warming the globe up, we might be initiating an ice age rather than kind of runaway greenhouse heating, if you will, correct? That's correct. I mean, yeah, that's why I think it's important if we want to delay the onset of the ice, next ice age, that we make certain that we don't in any significant way melt the winter polar ice cap. Now, a lot of attention's gotten onto the summer polar ice cap, which has shrunk very significantly. But when you shrink the summer ice cap, you basically put more rain on Siberia and Canada. But when you melt the winter polar ice cap, now you deposit snow on Siberian Canada. So that's what we need to watch. Make sure that in no significant way do we melt the polar winter polar ice cap. Is this the sort of thing we can prevent the ice age from coming, or is it just possible to delay it? And roughly by how much would you say? I mean, we're looking at delay. I mean, uh, 
it's inevitable an ice age is going to come, but we don't have to make it come, uh, you know, 50 years from now. We can put it off for a millennium, maybe even a millennium and a half. Uh, so uh, uh, that's certainly within uh, the realm of human possibility. And in weathering climate change, I described several ways that can be done while we boost the world economy. No need to sacrifice the world economy. It can be done while we boost the world economy and also boost uh, the world's ecosystems. So it's hard to get away from the fact. So it seems like we've got this ice age that's inevitable, the time scale a uh, little, little more amb ambiguous there. But when you read scripture, you see that there's an end times where there are some pretty catastrophic things happening, that there's starvation and wars and famines and things like that. What, does an ice age play into, or is there any correlation between an ice age and what we see described in the end times in the Bible? There could be. I mean, we could actually delay the ice age more than about 1500 years. But if we do that, uh, we melt all the ice uh, in the Tibetan plateau, the Rockies, uh, the Andes, uh, the Alps. And when that happens, you don't have enough water uh, to feed the planet. Uh, we're able to feed seven and a half billion people because of the melting of ice left over from the last ice age. So that's the ultimate limitation. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you uh, bring on uh, the next ice age earlier than that, then yeah, a lot of people have got to exit from Canada and Siberia and Finland and Sweden. So you've got massive migration issues uh, and you will bring on climate instability. And with climate instability, you're not going to be able to feed uh, billions of people. Well, thanks, Hugh. I really appreciate your comments. It's just impossible to talk about climate change and ice ages and global warming without getting a lot of political discussion in there. But what's fascinating is when we look at scripture, we find that God has created this world designed it very well and also given us charge over it. And so there's lots of things we can do to take care of the planet, recognizing that there is going to be an end times and we need to be prepared for that. You know, I would encourage you to go to reasons.org. Hugh's written a great, great series of blogs on this called The End of Civilization as We Know It. It's a three-part series. So if you search for The End of Civilization on reasons.org, you'll get access to those three blogs, see what will happen in an ice age, what are things we can do to take care of it, and how we can use this issue to share the gospel with others.